three. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Gaza! <laughs> How's it going, brother? <laughs> Ray Goss. Good things to you, my man. How's things, buddy? Oh, epic. Interesting times, but uh, going super well. How about you, my man? Yeah, but cheapest, crazy times, man. But uh, also uh, <laughs> managing to keep a smile on my face, which I think is, yeah, is good. But That's so good. Um, this week's our Superhuman Ship uh, podcast episode off the back of our chat last week with uh, AJ Fenter. And AJ is a ex uh, rugby player. He, uh, you know, played sport at a really high, high uh, level uh, for the Springboks. And we just had such an amazing chat with him, and he really kind of opened up to us. And we we took a lot from that chat. Um, and just in terms of you know the top three things that we took, uh, I guess the first one that we spoke about in the chat was around um, expert advice and how difficult it is these days to kind of know who to believe when it comes to things because as i'm sure a lot of you that are listening find you will have experts for example in this current situation that we're in in coronavirus and you know one of them will say something like you know way 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 out here on the left and then you'll have an expert in the exact same field that will say something like way way out here on the other side of the range Mm -hmm. And you're like, hang on a second, but both of you guys are experts. You've been doing this for 30 years. Like, who am I supposed to believe? And it makes times now really, really confusing, you know? And it's not just in relation to coronavirus. It could be in relation to kind of anything. I think it is like these days, you know, diet or mindset or, you know, business or finance or whatever the story is. It's like, it's really kind of difficult, isn't it, Craig? You kind of almost have to, you know, sometimes take something with a bit of a pinch of salt and then go and do your own research to go find out, okay, cool. What is the, what is the actual truth here sort of thing? So, Mm. so yeah, it makes it really interesting times I think right now when it comes to these sort of things around expert advice, doesn't it? Oh, totally Gareth. And it's not surprising at all that there are so many uh, conspiracy theories and things like that floating around because on the one hand, I kind of totally get it because there that kind of thinking is almost just as valid as anything else right now because it feels like there's no consensus and when that's the case it's like okay that makes a bit of sense that's that's one possibility right now and we really have to start trusting ourselves and our own sort of critical thinking skills and help each other to have these opinions and then look at them through a lens that's like realistic as well uh, but it isn't easy at all, and we can only strive to find the most. So the some little tricks, I mean, whenever you Google something or you want to look up something, always look at the negative of it as well. Don't just Google like the stuff that you want to hear. You know, try the opposite as well, and you'll get a whole host of uh, opposing opinions. And that's quite helpful because, you know, it's it's tough because you go, oh, that's that's not what I wanted to hear because I kind of already spent the time formulating my idea but there are certain debates on things where both sides have valid information that that you could sort of agree with on to some degree you know and that can influence the way you think about things and i think an important thing to realize as well is that we tend to be in our bubbles our friends and the people we're around are generally thinking similar thoughts to what we are and so it's very easy to be in this echo chamber of uh, of thinking and that that's we we love that because it's comfortable but it's really important actually just to sometimes step outside of that and 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 not just to to you know preach to the choir all day long and you know there's certain ways that we can do this and and not one of them is not just relying on what you see on social media hey Gareth absolutely Craig and I think we all kind of like you know, we all kind of gravitate towards that confirmation bias. You know, we want Mm. to hear things that we kind of agree with and that we believe in, and that that is a trap within itself. Um, And I think one of the benefits of actually looking at both sides of a story is it kind of gives you a more rounded view on things. And and in a way, it makes you like a, a better person, you know, because you can you can understand things better and, and people's perspectives better and that there's, you know, there's two sides to every story. So don't always believe everything you hear, go and hear the other side too. Um, so, so yeah, there is a lot of benefits, I think, in trying to actually 
um, find this common ground or middle ground sort of thing. So, but it's, it doesn't make it any easier in terms of mm. who to know what to kind of like believe in. So it, it is, it is a very uh, interesting time right now, you know, when it comes to these sort of things. Um, and yeah, so, so yeah, just, uh, just kind of, you know, make sure you, you sort of do your own research when it comes to, it comes to everything that you hear or watch, you know, like if you watch things, documentaries or whatever, there's, there's always another side to it. And I guess in these confusing times with information overload, it can often kind of disrupt and have a negative impact on our mental health, you know, and I think one of the biggest things which we're still not necessarily talking about enough now. It's almost like this massive kind of shadow in our discussions that we're kind of just leaving there in the corner is mental health, you know, and uh, also just kind of like slightly related to that as well is, is burnout. You know, so many of us are just so busy and hopefully what this coronavirus and lockdown has allowed us to reflect on is how busy our lives are and that we do actually need to all try and slow down a little bit more and, and just get rid of some of that stuff that's on our plate, you know, because we do want to have a mental, a healthy mental state. I think this is going to be key for us to coming out of this on the other side with some positivity and with some optimism. And one of the things that we think is really important to do is talk about these things more. Because when you do that, when you become more vulnerable, it basically just kind of empowers other people to do this as well. And this is one thing that we really noticed with AJ is that this is a massive guy, right? Played for the Springboks, played at the top level of sports that you possibly can play. Uh, as tough, he's as tough as they come. But he suffered, you know, with anxiety and burnout and mental health issues. And then he started talking about them. It took him a while because he was embarrassed and ashamed. But actually, once he started talking about it, that's when things really started to change for him. And he realized it was actually part of the healing process. And if we can all realize that on our own levels, you know, it doesn't matter what level you are suffering from something. If you can start talking about it, that is part of your healing process. And I think that is massively powerful. Hey, Craig. Totally, Gareth. I think the mere fact of you talking about it, there's a process that has to happen as well. You have to actually think, what is it that's bothering me? What are the things that are actually on my mind that are making me feel this way? Sometimes there's a bit of a disconnect between what we're sort of feeling in our bodies and the actual emotions. And, and if we can identify what those are, then we can start to go, okay, cool. That's actually what it is that's bothering me. And Sometimes that's facilitated by actually just talking about something because there's a thought process associated rather than just sitting in our heads, you know, and that's, that's never really a healthy situation. And as you said, Gareth, you know, by talking about it, it's, it's a sort of a ripple effect because number one, from my inside, I start to feel a little bit better because it's not bottled up, but then also the other person might just feel that sort of connection with you, number one, and then number two, maybe a bit of relief and say like, wow, I also felt that way and I've never spoken about it now. Maybe, maybe I can a little bit too. And so, as you said, it's kind of a win-win there. There's, it's not just a one-sided thing. And, and I think if we can, uh, one of the things we really loved about speaking to AJ was, as you said, it's just like the stereotypical alpha male, you know, who, who couldn't be more sort of, sort of rough and tough on one hand, uh, really just opening up and, that gives a lot of people in that sort of who identify that way also the opportunity to sort of open up. And I think it's important for us to sort of start questioning some of these archetypes that we have as men and women and things like that. And, and, and what masculinity really is, you know, is, is masculinity being sort of hardcore and, and pushy, pushy and, and tough and, you know, boys don't cry kind of thing. Uh, or is it something else? Or is there is there another way of being brave? And um, I think people like AJ are, are are changing that narrative a little bit, which is which is epic. And I think it's important. And I think we should uh, celebrate that more in society as as um, as we move forward. Because 
uh, it's very destructive and we see the destructive effects of people bottling things up inside. It just sort of comes out in, in, in bad behavior in one way or another, you know, whatever that may be. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, this, this whole thing sort of ties into actually the whole way of, of just growing as a human being, you know, he grew, uh, as a human being when he realized, wow, I can talk about this, even though it wasn't easy. And, um, there's ways that we can sort of grow personally in terms of personal growth. And that was another thing that we took from this chat, uh, was there, there's certain steps you can take to, to grow as a human being. And there's tools and tips and things that we can do that really make a difference to our mental health, but also then looking on the real positive side of like mental growth, isn't it Gareth? Yeah, for sure, Craig. And I think, you know, something which popped out to me like in the chat is that we must never think that growth is actually going to be easy. You know, growth actually requires a lot of effort, a lot of action, a lot of work and a lot of tough decisions. And in AJ's case, you know, the first real tough decision he had to make was to slim down his group of friends. And because they weren't feeding him correctly, like the way he wanted to, they weren't feeding him with optimism and positivity. And so this is a difficult thing to do. We have to make difficult decisions and then make choices and take actions off the back of that to actually grow as a person. So it is a, it is a, it is a difficult process to actually get to the end game. You know, it's not all sort of hunky dory and easy going or whatever. So like we have to put in that effort if we want to kind of get to where we want to get. And, you know, he implemented other things like daily meditation and gratitude journaling, you know, stop watching TV, Craig, isn't that a massive one, especially right now? I mean, you know, (laughs) we've spoken about this so much, how it's so easily to get sucked into this kind of negative vortex. If you are watching the news right now, you know, and you're reading the updates, you know, daily or whatever on coronavirus, like it's, it's really not good for your mental health and your overall well-being. And we really need to be careful with the amount that we consume and what we consume. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a whole kind of, um, yeah, it's a whole process, isn't it? Yeah, totally Gareth. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I think it's, you know, processes are, are, and goals are, are two slightly different things. You know, we can, we can create goals for ourselves, for our personal growth and our mental health and our, you know, these kind of things or, or physical health even and say, look, I want to, like you, you, you did, you know, bodybuilding competitions and you had a goal, right? You wanted to reach a certain physique or whatever it is. And the, the thing we need to fall in love with though, and really double down on are the, is the process is the, is the day to day. What does it take? So we have to learn to break these things down. And that's where these self care routines, even though there might be a better word for that, you know, for some people, but you know, like you said, the meditation, these are the small steps to get you to the X, Y, Z goal. Goals are transient though. They come and go and we find a new one. But if we can learn to love those little processes and gratitude in our day-to-day moments, the, the, the process of doing these things, this is the way we really make long-term sustainable changes in our lives. And uh, it's all well and good just to think I want X, Y, and Z, but you really do actually at the end of the day have to sit down and and, and plan it out a little bit. And then what, what does each day look like so that you can get there? So I think that's really what, you know, what we've taken from this. And, uh, but yeah, we, as always, we've just taken uh, so much time from this of, of thinking about how to think basically and, and how to be in the world. And, you know, AJ is a prime example of, of someone who's just had a change in their story and their narrative. And it's so exciting to see when someone when someone grows and evolves the way they are. And this is what lights us on fire to, to see that we all have this potential, isn't it Gareth? And uh, yeah, so yeah, we're just so grateful to you all coming along this, this journey with us and uh, joining us today. And uh, as always, we're just grateful for you all here with us. And we're really excited because next week we've actually got a, another alpha male who's made some changes in his life. And it was another epic conversation, wasn't it Gareth? Yes, indeed, Craig. Uh, we, we still have to pinch ourselves with these guests that we have on our show. And next week, we're speaking with Joe Finneekirk, another ex-Springbok rugby player who has literally 
changed his life 180 and is now running a healing sanctuary in Costa Rica. And we had such an amazing chat with, with him. We can't wait to launch that next week. And until then, we just hope that you guys have an amazing week. Keep smiling, keep a little bit of optimism in you and have a great time and speak to you soon. Cheers. Waking at dawn, packing the gear.